What is up, chillers? It's Madeline here, and it is cold as hell. Um, I don't know how cold it is today. Let's let's find out. I think yesterday was in the minus 40s or 50s with the wind chill. Uh, hey Siri, what's the temperature outside today? The high temperature for today will be minus 25 degrees, and the low will be negative 27. Okay, but with the wind chill, I don't even want to know. My car started uh, before and after work yesterday, so that's a win. That's a win. Um, so today, because I'm bored and it's cold and I haven't done this in a long time, I figured maybe I'd make a little video. And I kind of want to make this about how I've been feeling lately about my relationship to media. So, I, I love music, okay? I like listening to music. I don't really play music. I don't really, like, think I have, like, the most crazy, obscure, or, like, objectively good taste or anything. I remember before that, uh, before I got Spotify, before, like, streaming even became, like, a huge thing. I was a CD person. Early 2017, I think February, is when I actually subscribed to Spotify officially. For the first while, I thought, yeah, wow, like I used to spend so much money on CDs um, every month. Now I can just pay $10, or I guess I was a student at that time, so like $6, and just have um, access to almost anything I wanted to listen to. Everything just gets kind of like ruined. Um, by Butch Guys. Spotify has some sketchy practices in how they compensate artists. So I just, I don't love that. And I don't know, maybe it's this isolation. Maybe it's just being alone and not like exposed to anyone in real life. And I've kind of reverted back into like an early to mid 2000s aesthetic way of living. I don't know, it's just something that I've been interested in and it's been a really fun way to like I guess uh spend this quarantine I don't know I grew up really like nostalgic for like the 80s I thought the 80s were really cool being in the mid 2000s thinking the 80s are really cool how can anyone look back on this era and think it's really cool and now I am my relationship with music is completely different like before it's like I'd buy a CD and maybe I'd buy it because I heard the artist was good and there was like a five dollar CD at the at the local record store that was used or maybe it's like I liked a couple songs off the album so I just bought the whole CD and then I'd put it in my CD player or my car and I would listen to it and even some of the deep cuts or songs I didn't originally like ended up really growing on me. I found that with Spotify, it's like you can listen to something and then if you get tired of it, you can just access like anything in the world. I don't build the same relationship with my music as I do when it's kind of like all I own. I wanted to make a little video um, about the CDs that have been like accumulating as I like bring them to my car and leave them there. And I was kind of looking at it and it was a funny mix. So like kind of like a, a what's in my bag, but a what's in my dashboard console. Um, I just got them in a pile here. There's no chronological order. Um, and I'm just gonna talk about them, okay? I'm just gonna start. Okay, still obviously a blank disc. Okay, so, oh, sorry. This is actually one of the mixes I made for my car. Um, so you guys are gonna really hate me for this, but I named my car Mabu like after the pup song because um, The day that I bought the self-titled pup album. I also picked out that car So I call every CD I make the Mabu mix and with like the Roman numeral of the number it is So this is Mabu mix looks like seven um, that I made last year in September end of September and it's kind of funny, I put like Hello Kitty stickers on it, I got the track list. Um, I love making mix CDs, it makes me f really recall the good old days. Uh, moving on, the next CD I have is also a mix CD that wasn't made by myself. It was made by Harris and he gave it to me for my birthday. It's really cute. He, he put the a ticket stub from the Japan Droids Cloud Nothings. 
this concert we went to on October 16th, 2017. We went to that together and we like held hands and we walked there even though we like weren't like officially like anything at all. It was so cute. Anyways, so he made this happy birthday Fango Jet. And then in the CD case is a picture of me with two joints in my nose. <laughs> um, and then I have this CD, which I got in like the $2 bin at the Vinyl Diner when I was in high school. And I still keep it in my car because it's such a good album. It's the Fox Confessor Brings the Flood by Nico Case. Um, another CD. Oh, I have this mix CD. I made it. It's like a construction paper case. Oh my god. Look at it. It's like a sad face with dollar signs. It was from a CD I made for myself called I'm Rich. Um, and it's, I made this in 2015. When I made it in 2015, I was like, I want to make a mix CD of mid-2000s indie rock. So we've got like Klaxon, Subways, um, We Are Scientists, Queens of the Stone Age, a Block Party. Um, the next CD, y'all aren't going to be surprised at all. It's the Twin Fantasy with both Face to Face and Mirror to Mirror. I'm not going to say anything more about that because you know. Another CD I have in here was literally a dollar at the Vinyl Diner. Um, it's um, it's by a band called The God Rays and the album is called Songs for the Stars and it's from 1996. Anyways, it's like kind of funny. It just captures an aesthetic. I kind of just picked it up like I ran like sometimes that's what I'll do is I'll just like pick a random CD if it looks okay and I definitely didn't like it as much when I bought it when I was 15 but now after some time has elapsed I really like it actually um, and it just it's perfectly nostalgic for me so uh, and it's like you're not gonna find that on Spotify you might not even find it on YouTube it's just so random <laughs> Um, this CD, oh, this CD I got at the Vinyl Diner, like, not that long ago at all, like, last week, actually, like, literally very new. Um, it was $2, the price tag is still on it, and it's called I Can, I Can Wonder What You Did With Your Day by Julie Doiron. Anyways, it's like CanCon, like, I saw the Canada government, uh, label on it, which is why I bought it. <laughs> and also, it's, like, cute, look at that. Um, honestly, this freaking slaps. I want to listen to it more. I put it in my car and was very, like, very pleasantly blown away um, by it. So, again, if anyone wants this shit on, like, a flash drive, just, like, hit me up. And I got this at Value Village for $2, and it is called the YTV Big Fun Party Mix. Look at this, you guys. Look at this cover. Oh my gosh, are you... Is that taking you back someplace? Because it took me back someplace. I'm gonna just kind of hold up the track list a little bit, so just like take a look if you can pause the video or something. <laughs> I love this shit. I'm... On the same on the same kind of vein, I have another one, also two dollars at Value Village. Much Dance, 1999. Check this out. Pause the vid. Pause the vid. Okay. This shit and the thing about these mixes is that they're mixed right so you put it in and it like all the songs kind of flow into each other um because it's meant to like put it on when you're having a party like you know so there's no silence between the songs do you see this little guy do you see this little guy like do you guys remember that do you guys remember that i just this shit oh, it has unlocked something within me uh, um i have this <laughs> I got this at the vinyl exchange. It's <laughs> it's uh, 14 songs by Paul Westerberg, and I I bought it in like 2017 because I liked a guy who liked Paul Westerberg. And honestly, it's a really good CD, which is why I keep it in my car. Um, I'm firmly in the belief that you can find music through like cringeworthy ways and people, but like you know, if you like it, you like it. And it's yours now. Last CD, this is another one I got at Valley Village relatively recently. It's two discs, and I've only actually listened to one of them. The one is actually in my car right now. And it is so good. It is so good. It's like, I want to be able to hang out with you all so that you can come sit in my car and we can drive around in the summer and listen to these because it's incredible. It's Trance All Stars 2002. 
Oh my god, featuring the best in trance, techno, chill out, and underground. Oh my god, these- How excited I am about this. Cause I just- this has been like the highlight of my life lately. The thing is is that people aren't as nostalgic for these things quite yet. A lot of this stuff I find is like still not terribly hard to find or terribly expensive because people aren't realizing like the aesthetic capital that it has quite yet. We're starting to, um, but like, I don't know. I feel like I'm a little too early to the party. I mean, obviously I had to find a community somewhere online who celebrates this, this era. Um, it definitely started with um, the user Froyo Tam and like the kind of related communities around her. Graphic, she does graphic design and she runs a lot of different like aesthetic accounts on the internet. Like you may have heard of like the Y2K Aesthetic Institute that's run by Froyo Tam. Um, she also is one of the three who created the Digicam Love uh, community. I'm in a discord with all with all of them and everyone else like it and the thing is is there's not that many people in the discord there's just a few of us um and we all like connect with each other on instagram and stuff that's kind of why i made my digital camera instagram in the first place if you guys are interested in like these kinds of aesthetics and the technology um and whatnot i'm part of a facebook group like it's a pretty big facebook group and it's called the crt collective and it's people who just kind of show off their interesting setups with their um crt monitors whether they're computer or television monitors and some people have some really cool ones people even like post when they have ones for sale of course like no one's in saskatchewan getting rid of them so they're all over like you know all over mostly north america but some people have some really interesting ways that they set up their stuff i'm not going to be out here collecting crts or anything like my retro gaming begins and ends with a ps2 like my crt i got for free and facebook buy and sell and it's by no means like a really crazy cool sony trinitron um it's just like a regular panasonic I, but it is really cool to see what people are doing um with their setups and what kind of monitors they find some people have some really old ones some people even like mob them i don't know thanks for like watching this i guess it's mostly me just talking about why i've been into this aesthetic of like the mid 2000s if you guys have any like if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff or like wanna i don't know borrow something i have a lot of mp3s and i will gladly put them on flash drives for you i also have a lot of flash drives so wear a mask don't be an asshole over the mouth and the nose. Some people don't fucking get it. Anyway.